From the zany charm of Zoolander to the poignant depth of the secret life of Walter Mitty, Ben Stiller has redefined comedy and storytelling in Hollywood. Born into a world of entertainment, he carved out his own path as a multi-talented actor, writer, director, and producer. This is the story of how a young comedian grew to become one of the most recognizable and versatile figures in film, blending sharp satire with touching humanity, making audiences laugh, reflect, and dream all at once. Early Life The Family Legacy Benjamin Edward Mira Stiller was born on November 30, 1965, in New York City to two well-known comedians and actors, Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. His father, Jerry Stiller, was famous for his role in the comedy duo Stiller and Mira, while his mother, Ann Mira, was a respected actress and comedian in her own right. Growing up in such a vibrant and creative household, it seemed inevitable that Ben would eventually gravitate toward the world of showbiz. Despite the laughter and creativity surrounding him, Stiller's childhood wasn't without its challenges. His parents, like many in show business, had demanding schedules, and Ben often found himself exploring New York City on his own. These solitary adventures in the city would later influence his films, especially The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which deals with imagination and longing for something more in life. Ben Stiller's early exposure to acting came through home movies that he made with his sister Amy. He quickly developed a fascination with filmmaking, and by the age of 10, he had already directed and starred in his first short films. His love for the craft deepened as he grew older, leading him to study film at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, though he left after just nine months to pursue a professional acting career. Breaking into the industry, early career, and The Ben Stiller Show Stiller's entry into Hollywood wasn't immediate. Like many aspiring actors, he struggled to find steady work, often taking small roles in television shows and films. His first significant break came when he was cast in The House of Blue Leaves on Broadway, which led to him being noticed by major Hollywood players. He soon started making comedic short films for Saturday Night Live, SNL, which highlighted his talent not only as an actor, but also as a writer and director. One of his early notable works was a short parody film titled The Hustler of Money, a spoof of Martin Scorsese's The Color of Money. The short was well-received and ultimately led to a brief stint on Saturday Night Live in 1989. However, Stiller's desire for creative control clashed with the structured environment of SNL, and he left after just four episodes. But this setback didn't deter him. In 1992, Ben Stiller created The Ben Stiller Show on MTV which was a sketch comedy show that was a precursor to his later work in comedy. The show combined absurdist humor with sharp cultural and political satire, showcasing his unique style of comedy that often blurred the line between the ridiculous and the profound. Despite critical acclaim, the show struggled to find a mainstream audience and was canceled after just 13 episodes. Ironically, the show went on to win an Emmy for Outstanding Writing in a Variety or Music program after it had already been canceled, solidifying Stiller's potential as a comedic visionary. The 1990s Rising Star with Reality Bites and The Cable Guy The mid-90s marked Stiller's rise to prominence in the film industry, both as an actor and a director. In 1994, Stiller directed his first feature film, Reality Bites, a coming-of-age drama that captured the spirit of Generation X. The film, which starred Winona Ryder, Ethan Hawke, and Stiller himself, became a cult classic and helped establish him as a director capable of blending comedy with heartfelt moments. Following the success of Reality Bites, Stiller took on various roles in Hollywood comedies. One of his most significant films during this time was The Cable Guy, 1996 where he directed Jim Carrey in a dark comedy that showcased the dangers of media obsession. Although the film received mixed reviews at the time of its release, it has since gained a cult following and is often praised for its biting satire and Carrey's outlandish performance. Stiller also began solidifying his place in Hollywood as a comedic actor. During the late 1990s, he starred in several popular comedies, including Flirting with Disaster, 1996, and There's Something About Mary, 1998. The latter, in particular, became a massive success, catapulting Stiller into the spotlight as one of Hollywood's top comedic actors. His portrayal of Ted Stroman, a lovable but unlucky man chasing his high school crush, earned him widespread praise 
and established him as a go-to actor for awkward, relatable characters. The 2000s, Zoolander, Meet the Parents, and Global Stardom. By the turn of the millennium, Ben Stiller was firmly established as a major player in Hollywood. The 2000s would see him rise to even greater fame with several blockbuster hits that showcased his versatility and comedic genius. In 2000, Stiller starred in Meet the Parents alongside Robert De Niro. The film, which follows the disastrous attempts of Greg Fockerer, Stiller, to impress his fiancé's father, De Niro, was a massive hit, grossing over $300 million worldwide. The chemistry between Stiller and De Niro was a highlight of the film, and their comedic dynamic led to two successful sequels, Meet the Fockers 2004 and Little Fockers 2010. But perhaps one of the most defining films of his career came in 2001 with Zoolander. Directed, co-written, and starring Stiller, Zoolander was a satirical comedy about the fashion industry, where Stiller played Derek Zoolander, a clueless but lovable male model. The film became a cultural phenomenon, with its ridiculous one-liners and over-the-top characters. Derek Zoolander's infamous blue steel pose became iconic, cementing Stiller's place in the pantheon of comedy legends. Though the film was only moderately successful upon its release, it has since become a cult classic, with fans quoting lines and mimicking Zoolander's exaggerated expressions. During this period, Stiller also appeared in a range of comedic hits like Along Came Polly, 2004, and Dodgeball, a true underdog story, 2004. His talent for physical comedy, as well as his ability to play the straight man amidst absurd scenarios, made him one of the most bankable comedy stars of the decade. Expanding Horizons Tropic Thunder and Directorial Ambitions One of the highlights of Stiller's career as a director came in 2008 with Tropic Thunder, a satire of Hollywood and the film industry. The film, which Stiller co-wrote, directed, and starred in, featured an ensemble cast that included Robert Downey Jr., Jack Black, and Tom Cruise. Tropic Thunder was both a critical and commercial success, earning over $188 million at the box office and receiving praise for its sharp wit and irreverent humor. Perhaps most notably, the film earned Robert Downey Jr. an Academy Award nomination for his role as an Australian actor who undergoes a controversial procedure to play a black soldier. Stiller's ability to navigate the delicate balance between satire and respectability was evident in Tropic Thunder, a film that parroted Hollywood's excesses while also exploring deeper themes about identity, race, and fame. Beyond acting and directing, Stiller was also becoming a prominent producer during this period. His production company, Red Hour Productions, was involved in several successful projects, including Blades of Glory, 2007, and The Ruins, 2008. The 2010s transitioned to more dramatic roles and personal struggles. As the 2010s began, Stiller started to explore more dramatic roles, looking to broaden his range beyond comedy. One of his most significant films during this period was The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, 2013, which he directed, produced, and starred in. The film, based on the 1939 short story by James Thurber, follows a daydreaming photo editor who embarks on a global adventure in search of a missing negative. The movie was a departure from Stiller's typical slapstick humor, featuring stunning visuals and a more introspective tone. Though the film received mixed reviews, Many praise Stiller's direction and his ability to blend fantasy with reality. Stiller also ventured into more dramatic roles with films like While We're Young, 2014, and Brad Status, 2017, both of which explored themes of aging, identity, and societal expectations. These films allowed Stiller to showcase a more nuanced side of his acting abilities, proving that he could deliver compelling performances in both comedic and dramatic roles. Despite his professional success, the 2010s were marked by personal challenges for Stiller. In 2016, he revealed that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2014. After undergoing successful surgery, Stiller became an advocate for early cancer detection, speaking publicly about the importance of PSA tests and the impact of the disease on his life. Stiller also dealt with the passing of his mother and Mira in 2015. Her death was a significant loss and Stiller has often spoken about the influence she had on his life and career. Despite these personal hardships, Stiller continued to work, 
finding solace in his creative pursuits. Recent years, directing success and a focus on television. In recent years, Ben Stiller has shifted more of his focus toward directing, particularly in television. One of his most notable projects has been the critically acclaimed Showtime series Escape at Danamora, 2018, which he directed and executive produced. The limited series, based on the true story of a prison break in upstate New York, starred Patricia Arquette, Benicio Del Toro, and Paul Dano. The show was a departure from Stiller's comedic roots, showcasing his skill in directing tense, dramatic material. Stiller received widespread praise for his work on Escape at Danamora, earning a Director's Guild of America DGA, award nomination and further establishing himself as a talented and versatile director capable of handling complex, serious narratives. The success of the series marked a new chapter in Stiller's career, one that saw him transitioning into more behind-the-scenes roles while still maintaining his presence in the industry. Legacy a comedy icon and visionary director. Ben Stiller's impact on Hollywood is undeniable. Over the course of his career, he has proven himself to be a master of comedy, capable of delivering both broad humor and biting satire. From the absurdity of Zoolander to the cultural critiques in Tropic Thunder, Stiller's work has consistently pushed the boundaries of the genre. But his contributions extend far beyond comedy. As a director, Stiller has shown a keen ability to balance humor with heart, creating films that are both entertaining and thought-provoking. His willingness to tackle more serious subjects and projects like The Secret Life of Walter Mitty and Escape at Danamora demonstrates his versatility and artistic growth. Stiller's influence can be seen in the generations of comedians and filmmakers who followed him. His unique blend of slapstick, satire, and sincerity has left an indelible mark on Hollywood and his films continue to resonate with audiences around the world. The man behind the laughter. Though he is often associated with laughter and absurdity, Ben Stiller's career is a testament to his depth as an artist. He has navigated the world of Hollywood with grace and creativity, continually evolving and challenging himself in new ways. Whether he's making audiences laugh with ridiculous characters like Derek Zoolander or moving them with introspective films like Walter Mitty, Stiller's work reflects a deep understanding of both comedy and the human condition. As he continues to explore new ventures in directing and producing, it's clear that Ben Stiller's story is far from over. His journey from the son of two comedians to one of the most respected and versatile figures in Hollywood is one that will undoubtedly inspire future generations of filmmakers and actors.